Hi hey guys, it's Tristan from World English School and we're here at a place called Kaihin Park and the sun is shining bright and families are out and there's some drummers over there and that building right there is a big incineration plant where they burn trash and we're right on the seaside and this is called Tokyo Bay close to Tokyo City and so today we're going to read you this book called the Dragon's Cold, and I thought it would be a nice place to read here because this story has some beach in it. So this is called The Dragon's Cold, and it's by John Talbot. Where is John Talbot from? Is he American or British? Not sure. Oh, it says London, doesn't it? But it says California, too. So I think maybe he's British, but could be American. Okay, this is uh, The Dragon's Cold by John Talbot. Come on, called Alex. He and his friends hurried down to the beach. Is that the first page? That is, that's the first page. Look at this, said Mimi. Look what I've found. <laughs> Look. Hey, and this kind of looks like this area too. Alex is t calling his friends down to the beach and it kind of looks a little bit like this anyway. <laughs> Mimi's like, Look at this. What's she find? <laughs> it's very long, said Alex. And it's incredibly heavy, said Roland. What can it be? asked Spike. What do you think that is? It's a dragon! they all shouted. Let's get out of here! Oh, don't go, said the dragon. I won't hurt you. He sounded very sad. What's the matter? asked Mimi. Oh, look, the dragon is crying. It's not a mean dragon, but that does have a long tail, doesn't it? You ever seen a dragon tail at the beach? I've been to the beach a lot, I've never seen a dragon tail. But these kids found one. Look, they're comforting it. It's the dreadful cold, sniffed the dragon. I'm, it's completely put my fire out. All my family and friends sent me away. Duncan, they said, no one wants a dragon without a fire. We want you, said Mimi, and we'll take care of you. We'll think of something, agreed Alex. None of his friends want him because he can't breathe fire. Oh, and look at Duncan's eyelashes. <laughs> Such a sensitive dragon. <laughs> look, kids are exploring and comforting and oh, what's he? Is he sucking on a, his finger there? What's he doing? What's that in his mouth? Is he he's sucking on his thumb like a kid? That's cute. That very night, back in the village. All the sheets mysteriously disappeared from the clotheslines. Next morning, the villagers were very upset. They asked Menzi, the local plumber, to stand watch all night to catch the thieves. Why did they ask the plumber, I wonder? But yeah, what do you think happened? Do you think the kids took the, uh, the clothing, all the sheets? I'm really wasting my time, muttered Menzi. I have so much to do, and there is still the town's old boiler to repaint. Then, as the moon came out, he saw an amazing sight. What are those kids up to, he thought. Menzi has a funny voice, doesn't he? <laughs> but, yeah, so he, he saw the kids doing something with the sheets, didn't he? Look at this. What are the kids up to? Oh, and what is that tail? Oh, Menzi is meeting the dragon. Menzi followed them back to the cave and watched in astonishment. All night long, the children sewed the sheets together while the dragon, with his runny nose, slept up on his ledge. So the kids are doing what with these sheets? They're sewing them together. What do you think they're doing with them? As the sun was rising, Menzi ran back to tell the villagers what he had seen. Look, he's running back. It was huge, he said. <laughs> Oh, it must have been as long as 50 lengths of pipe. Come and see for yourselves. And now all the villagers are coming to see. Somebody even brought their dog. They've got a baby over here. A kid on a bicycle. From a safe distance, they saw an incredible sight. The children had made a huge handkerchief. Oh, that's what they were doing with the sheets. And can you imagine that look? It just, it looks kind of like this, doesn't it? This is the closest place I could find to this scene in the book. This is maybe somewhere in uh, Britain or something it looks like. But we're in Japan, it kind of looks like that. 
So they made a, a giant handkerchief for the dragon. Blow! They, sound, they shouted to the dragon. And again, blow harder! The dragon is blowing his nose. Whoosh! Oh my goodness, look at this. Suddenly there was a loud roar of fire as Duncan blew his nose. And of course, what did he blow, right? Oh my, he cried. That's better, much better. <laughs> look, they're all running away, shouted Spike. All the people are running away. Come back, everyone, cried the others. Duncan won't hurt you, come back. Now, of course, they're scared, right? If a dragon breathes fire, even if it's a sneeze. Slowly, the villagers did come back when they saw that the children weren't afraid. He's quite tame, said Mimi. Look, and she patted him on the tooth. <laughs> Pats him on the tooth. He's a tame dragon. He's a nice dragon. Oh, look at, look at what Duncan's doing now. Duncan was so pleased to have his fire back, he decided to stay on and live in his cave near the village. You've solved my problem with the boiler, said Menzi. So while the children prepared Duncan's breakfast, the dragon provided piping hot water for the entire village every morning. But look at this. So before the boiler didn't work, right? Didn't Duncan say he had to fix the boiler? And so now, um, <laughs> now they're, uh, they're getting the heat from the dragon for the boiler. And, and tell me, what are they doing down here? What are they, the kids are, is that dragon food, perhaps? I don't know. I don't know what that is. Interesting. <laughs> and look, all the sheets are back up on the lines. Oh, and, and this guy's taking a shower because they got hot water now. Nice. The end. Ah, oh, it's kind of a nice book. I liked it. It was, uh, had a, uh, a moral, didn't it? Cool. Well, that's called The Dragon's Cold by John Talbot. And again, check, take a look at this. This is where we are. Can you imagine a dragon out here in the water with a handkerchief? Yeah, thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye bye.